So tonight, of course, is New Year's Eve, and it's a dreaded holiday for some singles out there. Well, for those looking for love in 2007, there may be some good news. In her new book, Secrets of a Fix-Up Fanatic, How to Meet and Marry or Match, author Susan Shapiro argues the answer lies, yes, in the good old-fashioned fix-up. Why and what's the right way to get matched up? Well, here's what she recently told David Ushery. Susan, hello. Hi. Thanks for coming in today. Happy Thanks New Year to you. Thanks for having me. Happy New Year. I got to say, Susan, when I picked up the book, I was a little dubious because, you know, I've had friends ask me, hey, can you hook me up, set me up with someone nice? And my wife's had the same thing. And maybe we dipped our toes in that a couple times. Didn't quite work out. But you're saying it can. We were doing something wrong. <laughs> what was it? Well, I think that the way that people approach you to fix them up is really important. Yeah. So I think that if someone says, hey, can you hook me up with somebody cute? That's not necessarily right. the way to go. I think what you do is if you admire somebody's relationship and you say to them, um, you know, um, if you're vulnerable and say, I'm having trouble meeting somebody and I'd love to meet somebody special and I admire your relationship and I wonder if you know anybody terrific, please keep me in mind. It would be an honor. That's a very different story and that's taking it a little bit more seriously. And let's take a moment now to, to actually point out that you're not just preaching this. This is work. Explain that. I have fixed up 12 marriages that have 18 children all together, and I was fixed up with both my husband and his runner-up. And his, and his runner-up. <laughs> and his runner-up, which was that when we started dating, he, he was very um, commitment shy. And so at a certain point, I just gave up. I gave up on him, and somebody else, another um, great girlfriend, fixed me up. And uh, when I started liking the other guy then, uh -huh. my that husband came back and proposed. Typically works on men. <laughs> uh, now you point out though that at first you didn't think your husband was the right uh, match for you. When my girlfriend fixed me up with him, I said after our first date, I said, he's sweet and nice, but not my type. And she said, your type is neurotic, self-destructive, and not the least bit interested in you. Go out with him again. And I thank God every day I did. So that was a little bit of tough love from someone, which tough again love. is why it's important that you pick or ask or request someone who's going to be a matchmaker, exactly. someone that trusts you and knows exactly. you. Exactly. And six secrets of a fix-up fanatic is that you have to look for older married people in your life whose relationship you admire who will tell you the truth and who will push push you a little bit and stretch you because a lot of times people have a very um, you know rigid idea of who they should be going out with and they limit themselves too much. For example, I have a girlfriend who she's complaining she's having trouble meeting someone she's 49 years old I said what's your age range she said from 45 to 50 I said if you open yourself up <laughs> yeah. from 35 to 60 there's a hundred thousand more potentials right. out right. there so my fantasy is that people could read the book and by the end of reading the book they could have it's almost like having different colored glasses on you have x-ray eyes so that when you go out and look at the world you could look at the world a little bit differently and see what you've been doing wrong and fix it well as it was in your case and I think your point is identifying a matchmaker is key and you've got some suggestions on that so let's go through them in terms of making a love connection, how to approach a potential matchmaker? Um, as I said, I think that you should um, look for everyone in your world who you like and admire, and not just your close friends. I'm talking about your cousins, your hairstylist, your architect, your contractor, your neighbors, your teachers, anybody in your world. Uh, who you admire and then look at the relationships and if you admire the relationships I think that's a really good way to start and then I think that you have to approach them either with a letter or an email or a phone call and say do you have a few minutes to talk or take somebody out to lunch and then tell them the truth tell them that you're having trouble that you're lonely what your problems in the past have been but also be very open to hear their suggestions right. because quite often somebody who's older than you and married is going to have a little bit of a different idea and they might say to you you know what stop chasing after you know French filmmakers on motorcycles on their way to Paris and why don't you why don't you open yourself up to people that maybe would be a better husband or maybe would be a better father and I think if you're open to listening then that could change your mind and we have a few seconds left so I'm gonna go through these others that you also mentioned be inconspicuous in your approach be honest verbalize are you ready for a serious relationship and then use flattery to tell the person why you're asking that they be your yeah, and if you love say to mentor. somebody I admire your relationship you make them into a love mentor you know and you you ask them for advice and you have to be open and willing to take it but the biggest point Susan I think is what about the uh, managing expectations that is to say people expecting uh, lightning and music to play like oh yes this is the one exactly get rid of instant gratification get rid of the whole fantasy of instant chemistry I didn't really fall madly in love with my husband until our fifth anniversary it takes a long time anything good in life takes a long time it's worth working on it's worth giving somebody an extra shot it doesn't mean you're settling doesn't mean I'm settling in fact if you don't get it together you're settling for half a life right Okay, Susan Shapiro, thank you so much. Some great advice. Start the new year. Thank you. All right. All right, are you a product of the yes, fix-up? Yes, proud to say. Moi aussi. See? Me too. Yes, we're love mentors. <laughs> okay, We'll be right somebody. back. <laughs> Brett Favre.